Hello, Gaz Williams here at Synth Reactor, Toman Synth Reactor 19, 2019. This is the, the first time this has happened and hopefully it's gonna happen again. But a really special guest here. This is S from Electron. Yes, and hello. those of you who know me know I'm a huge Electron fan. So As is Electron of you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I um I just find Electron products the most kind of interesting in terms of it connects my love of kind of gaming in, in a strange kind of way and you've yeah. got like a similar kind of yeah you were asking me like well, hmm. well, did you have like a connection to gaming and, and then i was like i happen to have uh, uh. a classic game board this is how i got into music is this uh, little sound dj That's tracker software so right it's so a little, little uh, tracker so little you can make little tracks yeah <laughs> so you're navigating it to, 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 exactly yeah, and yeah it's very quick when you mm. learn this it's like right. here's a copy command and then you can just yeah. paste it and you can nice. go into table and it's sort of like an electron device so I usually right, say that right, right. I usually explain to people that yeah. an electron device is sort of like a tracker with a sequencer interface interesting yeah because of like on trackers mm. you typically have a lot of things going on on each step mm -hmm. it's the same with this and Right. Uh, the the people behind Electron from the beginning all came from the demo scene, so that right. sort of heritage is it's not just my like okay. extrapolation. It's right. actually the truth. I think it's okay. a lot of inspired by trackers. That's so. really interesting. And so yeah. you know, I mean, we've got here the Digitone. I like to call it the Digitone. Yeah. Other people say Digitone. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Digitone. It's the Digitone. The Digitone. The Digitone. <laughs> yeah. right. um, and. This is a lovely, I've always been really drawn to this. I mean, I remember mm. the first time I heard it was at NAMM yes, last year yes. and, and just this like silky, seductive mm. sound that it's mm. got. It's, um, mm. Obviously, it's, it's, it's an FM synthesizer, but it's interesting in that you can almost apply uh, like a, a subtractive synthesizer kind of sort yeah. of signal path. Yeah, so, I mean, for this one, what we did was to sort of treat the FM part as an oscillator. Mm. So instead of like the carrier output is always full volume. So it goes directly into the filter right. and then mm -hmm. and, and regular a ADSR, an ADSR amp. And so an it's LFO. much more like just an oscillator, oscillator. Into, into a subtractive signal. Right. So, so that kind of takes away a lot of the caveats of FM with like uh. keeping, keeping, you know, if you change your algorithm and suddenly mm. it's silent or you know okay. that won't happen and I that's see. something i've spent a lot of time making sure uh it's just mm. kind of foolproof in a way mm. yeah. and i think i was saying about like with when you when you learn like a game and you get really good at it and you kind yeah. of know how to sort of do all the combos yeah. and moves electron stuff kind of works in that way you yeah. can navigate you can jump really fast yeah. and i think everything that has a bit of a learning curve like right. keyboard shortcuts or like yes certain software or hardware and mm -hmm. It's it has a learning curve because um, I mean if if you have every single control like uh, right in front of you and say with a mouse mouse interface mm. you can click everything and it's it's nice to see it laid out uh, graphically but it's it's actually faster to just right. type it or or whatever and I guess it's the same for this when you learn how it works and kind of get into the workflow it's so quick it's just it's just uh, it becomes sort of an extension of your mind a bit. And it is in Overbridge yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so Overbridge is we, in we, beta, we but public both beta. worlds. Right, <laughs> right it's both worlds. Yeah, and yeah. We're showing the the Digitone beta. Can you use this as yeah. an audio interface then as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's an audio interface mm. as well. So, so actually, yeah. <laughs> so that's, and you uh, could input L and R here will become uh, your. Uh, Ins yeah. for the sound card, and, and you can use it as a really clever effects unit if you wanted to. Um, as yeah, well. yeah, I, I actually do that a lot. I, I usually I played a few live sets with mm. uh, Digitone and uh, a TB three hundred three and a TR six hundred six okay. because I really love those machines. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I use the inputs, and I I use um, the master effects you can send to the inputs, and yeah, the chorus is it's it's based off the Juno sixty chorus oh, or, or hundred and six. I can't remember oh, which, but yeah. it's very lovely. I think yeah. this is an amazing chorus. Okay, uh, so you've got something you can play for us. Yeah, maybe we should. Um, I've got this. Um, first, I'll just play the little patch. Okay. I've got this. Uh, then we'll do like a uh, breakdown and and explain yeah. what's going on. So you you approached me yesterday and mm. said. Uh, Simon, or yeah. S, or, <laughs> uh, uh, put you on the spot. Oh, uh, <laughs> could you make FM that doesn't sound FM? Yeah. I'm like, yes. I've, I've actually spent quite a lot of time doing that this year. I've, I've, I have, uh, I've done a lot of things in like Max MSP, where, which I prototyped the Digitone on. Oh. 
Okay. And uh, I guess my my uh, main achievement is is PWM for with just FM, and that's something you can bring to Nick later, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> nice, <laughs> but, nice. <laughs> yeah. But um, I sort of got into like replicating waveforms, and the 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 digitone is a bit. Uh, like when you want to replicate those sort of waveforms, you have to do very specific things with the face and mm -hmm. things. Um, so, so for this, which doesn't have a whole matrix of control, right. it's harder to do those specific things. But, mm -hmm. but um, um, it's still possible to do waveforms that are more like uh, analog style or or more geometric, so to speak. Okay. So this little patch. It's, uh, it's called uh, NES 25% speaking of video games. It's yeah, sort of yeah. like a chiptune sort of yeah, sound. Yeah. And how this works is actually this algorithm, number six. Um, this little cross here indicates that those two modulators modulate both carriers at the same time. Um, and the benefit of this is since we have this mix parameter that you can mix between a carrier C and a carrier B, it means that since they have the same face, when you mix them together and they have differences in the waveform, you get a you get the resulting so. difference. The difference. Yeah, it's kind of like a mask in, yeah. a, in a video software or something right, like right. that. So if we listen to uh, yeah. one page, uh, one side, mm -hmm. it's a bit... Right. They are similar but very different. And, and it, this one is, is, is 25 up and this one is 25 below. It, it won't totally cancel at the end because of the difference. Exactly. So it, so the middle yeah. creates right. this is, sort of... Is the, dif yeah. Yeah, is the difference. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. So the graphics are actually really appealing, aren't they? Because as you, as you yeah. change things, there's like little animations in yes. the graphics. So, which I find it really <laughs> yeah. cute, lovely. Yeah, that sort of, um, when I got into, I started at Electron in support um, uh -huh. in 2015. Okay. And uh, I've been doing like little ideas and things and patches and and uh, uh, for, for a long time. And, and uh, I kind of quickly weaseled my way into, or, or rather people recognize that I have a lot of like ideas and, and uh, uh, things I can do, so to speak, and and mm -hmm. uh, so with the Digitact, uh, I kind of stumbled into making the graphics. And my idea was always to do everything that can uh, that you can make into a representation of the function, rather than just a knob, right. should be done. Because I think I mean I'm a musician at heart, like a lot of other instrument manufacturers, and. For me, it doesn't make sense to look at a knob or a value. It makes sense to to listen and to have eye candy. It just makes things a bit more magical in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah. when you turn the D tune, it oh, becomes nice. this oh, weird, yeah. like a, um, yeah, little oh, squiggly thing. Squiggly lines. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun to do these uh, graphics and and uh, mm. just the design of the mm. synth engine mm. too. It's just been. Uh, Quite a so were you were you kind of in, integral in that bringing FM into this uh, you know yeah. bringing this product to life? Yeah, then? after the Digitact uh, mm -hmm. and its success, mm -hmm. uh, we sort of figured that of course we have to make a synth version. Right, and um, there were some loose ideas, mm -hmm. and I've been obsessed with FM since uh, many years back. It's been like I made. Almost, I've almost exclusively used FM for a lot of things for a long time. Right. Um, Especially in, in FM's dark days, really. Where mm, yeah, FM when it's, it's been kind of, yeah. I stumbled upon it. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, I was listening to this uh, this uh, duo from Sheffield called SND, Mark Fell and, and, and Matt Steele. And they used an FS and FS1R for their album Atavism, right. which is probably one of my most precious uh. Uh, albums uh, and and right. that's kind of where the obsession started. I, I nice. started looking into, and and it was horrible at first. I, I remember <laughs> hating it. I did these sounds like oh, nice. everything sounds tinny and right. terrible. And what the, what? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. As, as I as I got into it, I got this intuitive um, way of, of approaching. I, I don't think it's as hard as people make it out. It's just there's no. There's no clear way how to start. Right. Yeah. But this is kind of what the Digitone does, which is really cool, though, is it? Yeah. It helps it you make that, yeah. that step. I think what, what we've done here is 
I mean, I don't want to say we were the only ones, but I think it's fairly unique in how I think a lot of like simpler FM things kind of still um, grabs hold of the old paradigm and, yeah. and kind of just makes a very smart interface or something. But I was very adamant that we need to remove things as much as possible to to make it easy to use. And of course, being a synthesis method that is known for complexity, a lot of people will be like, oh, but then mm. you can't do this really good saxophone patch. Right. But it's like, yeah, but electronic music has changed a lot since the 80s. Like now for we sure. don't want things to sound like other things. We want it to sound like sound an like FM synth. Yeah. Um, Synthesizer sounds. Yeah. yeah. And and what an FM synth sounds like, yeah. that's up to you to define, I think. Right, right. And, uh, just... So so yeah, it was just important to to condense it in a way that makes sense and uh, just and to, of course like you know like electrons kind of superpowers has always kind of been rooted around the you know amazing sequence yeah, capabilities yeah. and all the parameter locking. I mm. mean, for those of you who don't know about the electron process, is uh, you know every step within a sequence can have a completely different set yeah. of parameters I mean I'm sure this is old news to a lot of you but um, <laughs> but to, the, to then apply things like maybe like m changing the algorithm yeah, on a different step you know yeah. it's like when has that really ever been possible I mean that's a kind of yeah that's, a, a that's very uh, unique that was feature. like yeah uh, the one thing we, we really wanted to do was let's change the algorithm per step because right. that's such a weird so cool thing could you play us a bit of music yeah so so let's just first listen to this pad okay <laughs> British electronica. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of changing sounds, yeah. here's this is just one track with mm -hmm. the pad, which is it's very straightforward, it's a synth track. Mm -hmm. Then we have this track. Nice. So on this one, what we're doing is all of these blinking lights are differences in the sound. So the default patch is sort of loaded onto the track, and, and, and for this one it's BD9, which, I mean... Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what I've done here is, since I was a bit short of time, <laughs> I loaded in a bunch of sounds in our what we call sound pool, and then mm -hmm. you can lock different sounds per step, and the engine is so fast that it can just, just change without... Any, yeah, it just jumps yeah. straight away. So but you can also just, uh, like, enter for example, and, and change the bass drum into something completely different completely here. Completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe I want to remove the uh, the things and add a reverb and do this. Being able to put the different sound locks on the steps means that that single track can have multiple sounds. So thus making a four track sequence uh, become yeah, uh, you know, so, but yeah, exactly. So, and since it's polyphonic, yeah. uh, the eight voices they kind of get rotated around, and mm -hmm. making a drum track is very easy. Yeah, okay. But now with the parameter locks here, oh yeah, with the really little plop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's and uh, as you can see, it's very fast. Like yeah, that, that yeah. As you said, you asked me before if I feel like I, I'm very connect and yeah. connected to it, and I, I certainly am. It's just like yeah, yeah. So it was funny. Um, yeah. But I mean, I, I mean that is the thing, isn't it? That with an electron device and not just this one you are going to have to you are going to have to accept a certain amount of learning curve just Definitely, to, yeah, you know yeah. but yeah. the rewards are kind of manifold you know man yeah. there's, there's so much I you mean, can yeah, get from that's it that's of course a very personal thing i mean a lot of people just want like something that is very straightforward like mm -hmm. a one per nub function interface or mm -hmm. uh and and i mean that's fair. I guess it depends. I mean, for me, I really enjoy this type of workflow where I can get kind of deep into it, but mm -hmm. still like the sequencer and, and its musicality is very, I think, uh, these are very useful right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> machines. And, uh, and, and then when you switch to MIDI, then you've got another four MIDI channels. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, MIDI yeah, channels. these are become MIDI channels. Right. And have this uh, little, uh, yeah. yeah, and then you can send out your, and then you can use your LFOs to kind of do yeah, things. Yeah, send to CC and set. program changes. Yeah. And, so yeah. So actually, it's quite a powerful yeah. uh, device. And, it, and, and uh, for someone going to a hardware device for the first time, that's like, this isn't this is a pretty good choice really because it's a sort of a, yeah. a an affordable price point. You know, I mean, what what is this? We're talking about sort of six hundred euros. I don't or? know what it is right now because. Hmm. 
the mm. European market is right, always right. since right. it's you can. Well, we're talking around the six hundred ish. Yeah, sort of six hundred, seven hundred euros. Six seven hundred, yeah. 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 And you know they're always you know, these. It's sturdy, yeah. yeah, and it's, yeah. Built yeah. in uh, or assembled in Sweden, yeah. And Excellent. all of the parts are from uh, mm. just, uh, Swedish parts. It's, uh, and like once cool. you kind of get the gist of one device, then yeah. the learning curve when you move to the next device, there's a certain amount of stuff yeah, that ca- carries yeah, across. Almost no learning curve, I would say. <laughs> right. Right. You've done, mean, once you've done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and especially these yeah. Digi boxes, yeah, they, yeah. they are very similar. The Digi Tact and this mm-hmm. is just, the interface is very similar, and it's, yeah. they share the same sort of parameters. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So and yeah. So you've got some more tracks in this tune? Yeah, I have uh, a... Nice. It is giving me that early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very into uh, yeah, yeah, I've been sort of obsessed with Apex Twins mm. uh, nine, like 2000 right. stuff lately. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's coming back with uh, Jenk was doing like Jungle now and uh, yeah, we should do we should do something with that. Yeah. So the effects and the kind of spatialization, mm. you know, you can do it all inside here, can't you? you yeah, know, yeah it's exactly. So sort of this this patch, mm. uh, which yeah. is sort of like some kind of electronic uh, mm. electric keyboard ish. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That one is really dependent on on uh, the effects. If I if I turn down the chorus, it's just yeah, it's not the same thing. The chorus just gives it that just <laughs> yeah. beautiful. And, and the thing shimmer. I've actually done with the chorus, which I love on this device, is mm-hmm. I just send it to that full blast because mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening is the chorus page. Uh-huh. I'm I'm pushing down the width to center mm-hmm. because uh, I'm sending it to the delay mm-hmm. from this page. So that means it will it will so get into the delay kind of wobbly and, wobbly. and, and right. nice. It's nice. Everything is at max because you know <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Nice. And oh, also this mm. uh, here—the volume is the, is the mix volume from the chorus. So I'm uh, mixing out the chorus, right. then it into and the delay. Right. And the delay is quite short, mm-hmm. but I'm using the delay filter. Oh. Um, the volume here is t- turned down as well because right. the, the delay is going into the reverb. So I'm just altering the tone of this sound, and the reverb is that kind of lush, lush. spacious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It really becomes uh, yes. very special. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm, I, I have a little a confession in a way. Yeah. That I don't like overly modulating. Um, I love like rich sustained tones, you know, with sort of a, a smoother modulation as mm. opposed to. Mm. I mean, partly, I'm, I'm a bit scared of the Euro rack kind of lure. Yeah. Partly, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. I, I, I like, mo- I do like a more pure. Sort of sounds. Yeah, it's yeah I think I'm in the, s- in the same way a little bit because right. I, 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 I and, and when we're talking about like things that don't sound FM that doesn't sound as much FM. Mm. It's all about how much sort of how much you do with like if we the sine wave uh, doesn't sound like FM because there is none. <laughs> <laughs> but if you push it a little bit, it's oh. just it's yeah. just a quite yeah. nice yeah. tone. Yeah. But as yeah. we go up there, it starts like, oh, that's FM. You're right. And if, yeah. if we do the, the other operators, it's right. this harsh. That's it. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is like uh, 90s video game music. <laughs> and if we compare that to like um, these uh, weird uh, different... Uh, different drums it's uh, I mean it's the same synth <laughs> right or oh, there's these hi-hats and these are all quite intricate because the hi-hats for example I'm using the LFO to modulate the amp volume so it has this tick and without that it's kind of lo- losing its percussiveness and mm. the point isn't to do as much as you can with the modulation mm-hmm. but like just how a sound works because in in like the sort of eight to eight hi hats it's it's uh, I mean it's just six oscillators or whatever smashed together at certain frequencies, and what what makes that a hi hat is a high pass filter which I've applied and and a certain envelope a dynamic uh, 
a very specific dynamic and mm-hmm. I think that's more rep- that's very important to replicate and that's what will make it sound something that it's not so to speak yeah so uh, yeah so it's a lot about just finding those little uh, granularities in a sound yeah, yeah. and applying that uh, and this sort of engine with LFOs that you can use as envelopes and right. it just allows for just all that sort of tweaking yeah. and the dual filter we have a we have of course the VA filter uh, multi-mode uh, but we also have a sort of mm, tone filter just a bass with mm-hmm. sort of a bandpass mm-hmm. which is really handy actually. which is really handy yeah, yeah. it's uh, so just it's uh, pretty much ubiquitous at this point for me <laughs> <laughs> right okay because yeah. I mean you know, lots of people, and myself included, a lot of my uh, synthesizers do follow the, the, the typical subtractive mm. analog type approach, mostly analog now, actually. I've, yeah. I've still got a couple yeah. of digital ones. But um, And as great as it is, you do kind of reach a point where to get different textures, mm. uh, but still within uh, a certain kind of way of working. Like, I'm coming back a little bit to what I mentioned before, mm. the fact that mm. you can apply that experience to a degree but the fact that lurking inside there are real deep mysteries so <laughs> beyond this yeah. there's probably so many things in here that you yeah. could probably make that you would probably not even think is uh, yeah, possible ex- yeah, exactly. due to the yeah. you know it, it's like a, a factor of millions isn't it when you yeah, start I mean, to I mean, when, when, yeah I, it, when you start applying FM in really specific ways it's really possible to do anything mm-hmm. like uh, I, I spent some time as I said doing like sort of analog stuff ish mm. with it and uh, I have this Maximus P patch which does like PWM with FM and, and right. what, what how that works is mm-hmm. that you use one operator to just you phase shift it and make that cancel out the resulting wave uh, inside of the modulation <laughs> so ah. what you're doing is just creating a it's gap, a gap. Yeah. yeah and it's it's really quite simple when you when you apply it but it's not uh, very it, it's not a thing you just uh, you know you say of course stumble upon no it. <laughs> no you, you, you have, have to, to set the face and right. you have to do right. the right amount of feedback and the right ratios mm-hmm. and <laughs> so there's i mean there's a lot of things you can do with fm uh, that's that's uh, when you start really going deep into applying it you can get there but of course that's then you can sort of question what's really the worth of of uh, of having that uh, and i guess i mean i think potentially you could do oscillators that have more a dedicated purpose but are based on fm maybe there's a weird thing you can add i think like this patch for example this uh, simple uh, <laughs> NS uh, <laughs> yeah. 25% pulse whatever uh-huh. um, one thing I really liked with this was I could um, we have this mix thing of course that, mm-hmm. that mixes between op- uh, carrier outputs ah uh, yes and if I modulate that I get this kind of nice sweeping wave yes. motion kind of like a wavetable synth uh, because right. it's essentially it's doing the same y- thing as yeah. crossfaded between crossfaded two wave, waves. Yeah, different waves yeah and and a little a little little bit of fm yeah. in there yeah and a really nice yeah. uh, wavetable right and, uh, absolutely yeah, wavetable sound isn't it becomes yeah. You kindly gave me a copy of, is it your latest EP, on cassette? Yeah, I made a little cassette yeah. last uh, September, it's a right. while ago now, it's time for volume two, but <laughs> yeah, I, I make some, I, I mean, yeah, of course I make music, mm-hmm. that's why I make this. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, other than getting it on cassette, is it available online anyway? Yeah, it's available on Bandcamp, uh-huh. uh, it's overall.bandcamp, so it's okay. A-U-V-R-E-L, mm-hmm. link here. <laughs> no, no, no. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, definitely yeah. check it's out. It's like ambient techno, very very nineties, very mellow. It's, oh, it also it almost some... uses no FM. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah I, That's cool, cool. I, this summer, I, 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 since I've been so deep into making uh, making uh, new cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler alert! No, mm-hmm. but we're always working on stuff. But yeah. um, I'm always so deep in synthesis. That yeah. I was like, I just want to come home and yeah. make some music. So yeah, I right. grabbed all my old Roland gear and kind of like the MC202 which I love oh it's and great it's speaking of a very subtractive workflow it's great to yeah, just yeah. I think the appeal of that is just mm. the directness and yeah yeah totally uh, I had this on some tracks but I just sat down mm-hmm. every every day for like my my uh, my vacation mm-hmm. and made like 
15 tracks, oh. and four of them are on that EP. Electron's latest device is the model samples, which I think is one here. Yeah. Just grab it, I think grab it. Yeah. I won't go too much into this because mm. I'm going to do a piece with Chenk. Yes. And we're going to look yeah. at it. Mm. And it represents an interesting move yeah. going down a different yeah. route. It's a bit um, different. Yeah. And I was joking with Chenk about how I think this is a turbo version of the, Vol the Volca sample. <laughs> I know. And in a good I way. Mean, uh, it, fair enough. You know, yeah. and I think in a, it's like if you. So if you use a Volca sample and you kind of. Mm. You want that extra? The extra. Then yeah. this is like a brilliant. I can see this being a mm. really great path. Well, to uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it kind of just adds things. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, it's a bit. You can do. I, I've started making a few tracks with this. For I did a sound pack with mm. like, and uh, it's interesting again with like just uh, how an interface is and knobs and stuff. Mm -hmm. The thing with this is every single parameter yep. that is affecting the sound is is right it's there. there. Yeah. And, and so even that's yeah. such an easy thing, but it, it mm -hmm. makes a big difference when you use it. It mm. becomes a very different experience, and, and the result is different, too. Right. And it's interesting that Electron are doing this, because it, it, it almost is the counter to the criticism that some people may have, or, or, or yeah. that this particular workflow, there's an aspect of it that goes across the, some of the step yeah, 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 yeah. parameter kind yeah. of locking kind I of I mean, thing. Uh, we're, we're sort of just dipping our toes into this right. uh, simpler, mm -hmm. uh, a and bit a, more cost efficient yeah. market. And, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Cenk yeah. was saying it's like there's there's three tiers now, isn't there? This yeah, exactly. tier, the sort of beginner yeah. tier, the intermediate tier, yeah. and then the analog four and the octa track, yeah. Yeah. and the, the rhythm being the, the kind of yeah. the, the sort of top level, which uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I always advocate having a bit of choice. Yeah, for stuff yeah. Yeah, and, as, um, and of course, this comes with a load of stickers as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah, a genius yeah. move. Yeah, they are quite <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. This one. Yeah. Well, as I think I'm probably gonna, I think we'll call it a day yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you ever so much for this. Oh, yeah. Super, oh. super interesting. Can I yeah. end with a really ugly, nice sound that doesn't sound like FM? Yeah. This is uh, very funny. The guitar. <laughs> 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 Where's the guitarist? <laughs> no, it's it's pretty much a joke. I, I tried to make a carpus strong uh, sort of oh, guitar, right. and you cannot yeah. make it noisier. Oh yeah, nice. It's kind of dumb. Uh, but I mean, again, you know, <laughs> this is a box of delights. It you, truly it, is. It, I mean, for me, it's mm. it's it's sort of endless. Endless. Really, yeah. yeah. And absolutely. I mean, I have other stuff that's like I don't know what this is. Uh, this one, I think, is nice. Like. Oh, this is too slow. Ah. 130. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Ah, <laughs> the sound, you, it seduces yeah. me every time yeah, I hear there's, it. There's a lot of things you can do with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Percussions and yeah, I, I keep finding new things even even yeah. even though uh, I'm supposed to know all about it. <laughs> well, well, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> Want. <laughs> yes. yes. Massive pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Well, yeah. this I'm going to pop this out on my channel. I'm going to yeah. do something else now with uh, Chenk later on in yeah. the day. So keep an eye yeah. out for that. And uh, well, I'm going to kind of carry our party in here in. Uh, Synth reactor it is yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a real fun thing. Quite a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, we just literally all uh, loads of like-minded people hanging out and just having a right old laugh. And um, so anyway, there's going to be more from me. Certainly, check out S's music. You know, as you probably heard just in the little glimpses there. You know, <laughs> the guy has got cool tunes. <laughs> anyway, bye for now. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. Love that. <laughs>